are presented with the Quick Start. The Quick Start facilitates fast and easy map creation and access of maps already created. We are going to begin today by selecting the option to create a new map and then click OK. The Create a Map Wizard presents three options for creating a new map. We will choose Territories and then click Next. The wizard has four different methods that can be used for creating territories. The methods that are presently available are shown in black. And I'm going to begin by choosing the option to create these territories interactively. That is the default. And so I will simply click Next to go to the next screen in the wizard. Maptitude provides me options for the geography that I would like to use as my building blocks. The five digit zip code layer is displayed here and I do want to go ahead and use that. So I don't need to make any changes and will simply click the next button. I also have the option to include tracking fields in my territory. On the tracking fields screen, we can add tracking fields from a variety of sources and select that source by clicking the green plus sign and choosing to either add geography layer fields or in this case, import fields from a file. Since we're not using a territory table to create these territories, uh, using the same territory ta table isn't an option. I'm going to begin by selecting Add Geography Layer Fields. And this opens up a dialog that lists all of the fields included with Maptitude. So we, there are bunches of fields here. And let's just say that I want to include information about how people um, are moving around, their mode of travel. So if I type into that filter a few letters in the word mode, then these tracking fields are then reduced to those which have the letters I typed. I'm going to click on the first field and then shift click on the last one and then click OK to add those to my list. I can add additional fields if I want to by clicking that plus sign again, I can import them from a file. If I have a file, I can rearrange these fields. So if it's more important to me to see people, how many people walked in a zip code to move around, um, this is a mode of travel to work, then I can move that up. I can even set specific balancing values. If I want to remove a field, if I don't care about this other means, I can highlight a field and then click Drop Fields, and that field is removed. Once I have added the tracking fields I want and arranged them as desired, I will click Finish and enter a file name for the layer that is going to hold these territory definitions, and then click Save. Maptitude uses those settings that I entered and opens up a new map. There aren't any territories in it because I will define those on my own. And I will define them by using the territory manager, which opened up with my map. So this territory manager has a number of items that I want to set before I make changes to any territory. In the territory dropdown, I will specify the territory that I want to make adjustments to. I don't have any territories yet, so I will be creating a new territory. I have a variety of options for what I'll be selecting, if it's empty areas or if I'm going to prevent overlaps. Because again, we don't have any territories, I'll just leave this as it is. And then I can also specify the geography I want to use to build these territories. Even though I selected five digits of code as my building blocks, I do have access to other geographies that can be used as well. We'll leave this at five digits of code for now. 
Once I have reviewed those settings, I'm going to determine which of my selection tools I want to use. I can select by pointing. I can select by drawing a rectangle. I can select by drawing a circle, a shape, or a line. I'm going to choose the Select by Pointing tool as my tool to use. And I'm going to zoom here to the Seattle area where I want to draw territories. So now that I can see these zip codes, I'm ready to start clicking on them in order to build my territory. So clicking on any zip code highlights it in red. I can see the changes as I'm making these selections by clicking the Changes tab. And here I can see for each of my tracking fields how the data is starting to stack up. So I'm going to select a few more zip codes. And I'm able to see mode of travel for each zip code. When I'm satisfied, or at least partially satisfied with this territory, I can save it using the Save Territory Changes button in the Territory Manager. This gives me an opportunity to enter a territory name. I can adjust the color as desired, and then click OK. Maptitude saves those selected zip codes into the territory of the name that I have specified. I can use any of these selection tools that we saw a moment ago. So if I wanted to select by rectangle, I could then click and drag a rectangle, and all of the zip codes inside of that rectangle would be selected. I can save my changes there. Left-hand side of the screen in the Display Manager, I can see which layer I'm interacting with right now. Um, it's shown in bold, and I can see that's the territory layer. Since I know I want to include a piece of data from zip codes, my first step is to make that my working layer by finding five-digit zip code in the Display Manager, and then right-clicking to choose Make Working Layer. So five-digit zip code is now selected as the layer I'm interacting with. I'm going to open the color theme wizard. We need to have a theme on the field we want to include data for on our export. So that's most easily done using the color theme wizard. Now I do have a little trick here, and this file is linked in the files that we've provided. I'm going to click this load button. I don't actually want to color these zip codes in, even though I'm choosing a color theme. I really just want to use this as a vehicle for extracting data. So I'm going to use a settings file that is set up to facilitate that. So once I've chosen that settings file and clicked OK, Maptitude prompts me to select the field that I want to report data on. I did mention the field population, so I'm just going to type in the first few letters of that field, filter it, and then click OK. So that takes me back to the color theme wizard. I don't want to make any other changes. I'll simply click OK. Maptitude applies the theme, and I know it looks like it didn't really do anything exciting. It didn't really change the map. That's by design. So this color theme is set up to help me extract that data out into an Excel file instead of changing the way the map looks. So now that I have chosen the field, I am ready to go on and get back to my territory creation. All of the demographic data included with Maptitude is cited in the online help by choosing the help menu, choosing data package help, and then the specific data package for which you are licensed. mentioned when this dialog opened, this toolbox is the select dropdown. So in addition to selecting empty areas, you can select any area and prevent overlapping territories. So if you know you don't want them, you can explicitly make that the option. 
or you can allow overlapping territories. You also have the option to remove zip codes from the active territory, in this case is territory one. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the any area and allow overlapping territories. And I'm going to switch to my select by circle tool. And enter a radius, clicking OK. So Maptitude selects all of the zip codes in my radius. And I want to just make sure that I have switched this. I actually wanted to create a new territory, so I need to choose new territory here. And I'm going to just pick a couple of these guys too. So I do have an overlap. So when I hit that green check, I can enter a name for my second territory. And then this area that's kind of purple shows that I have two zip codes that are assigned to the same territory, uh, different territories rather, uh, territory one and territory two as it were. If I want to be able to see a territory uh, closer up, I have a variety of tools for that. The territory manager contains a zoom to territory tool that will zoom to whatever the active territory is, in this case, territory two. And there's also a tool that will show all territories. I happen to be showing all of them already, so that's not gonna change that view a whole lot. I can change the settings for these territories using the territory settings tool that gear or sprocket by choosing territory layer settings. I can add additional tracking fields on the fields tab. I can even put in a balancing value. So if I know that I want to have a minimum of 30,000 people that walk, I can put that balancing value in. And I also have some options for the coloring of the map. When I'm done here, I could add fields if I wanted. I'm going to click OK. And my changes are saved. And now that I have entered that balancing field for my mode, I can see how well I'm doing. So I have my value here. I'm over by 213 people. Um, and that is 0.71% that I've exceeded my goal. And I can change this. I also have the options of editing each territory by using change territory settings. I can change the name of a territory. I can even enter a specific balancing value for that territory. So if I know that I need more than 30,000 for this particular territory, maybe this one needs 45,000, I can enter that value here and the calculations will reflect that customized value. A nice uh, paper depiction of a territory by selecting the territory from the territory dropdown and then clicking the territory layout tool. Maptitude will create a customized layout showing just that territory on its own and including a legend if you do have your legend display. There are a few options for that territory layout. You can include the other territories which are touching, and you can also highlight if you would like to do that. These territories can be shared outside of Maptitude. In the Territories tab of the Territory Manager, I'm going to click and drag to select both of the territories and then right click. Choosing Export Territories to Excel will prompt me to enter a file name. And when I have entered that name, Maptitude creates an Excel file and opens that Excel file. Several tabs are included in that Excel file. So I will get information on the cities and towns that are in my territories, territory one and two. There is another tab that has that uh, field that I chose, that population field by zip code, 
And so I have my um, zip code and the corresponding population and then the proportional amount for the zip code. These are all going to match up. I have a tab for my territories that gives me the overview of each of those tracking fields I selected. We have a territories geography field, so this lists each territory and the corresponding zip code. There's some basic census demographics here. So in addition to my tracking fields, there are some other fields here. And as I mentioned, that list of cities and towns. So we're gonna go ahead and close that and look at another method for creating territories. So I'm just going to close this map completely. And create a new territory layer by locating the map menu at the top of the screen and choosing new territory layer. This time I'd like to create territories from my table. I will select the table and click OK and then click Next to go to the next screen in the wizard. Mapditude attempts to figure out the field that my data corresponds to. So because there is a zip field in my data, Mapditude has picked the zip code uh, layer, which is perfect. And it's also selected my territory field for me. If any of this was incorrect, I could check and change the fields to something that is more appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and add tracking fields. And I'm going to import my territory table data. I have some widgets in there that I want to use. I'll click OK. And I also want to add some geography layer fields. I'll choose those and click OK again. Click Finish, and Maptitude imports those territory assignments from the file that I specified, and also uses those tracking fields that I included from the original file. The rest of this information will be the same, so using these tools will be the same no matter how the territories are created. Let's take a look at yet another method for creating territories. So I'll close this map and create a new territory layer again. I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Open for this, for this particular go at it. And I'm going to change my files of type to map point map file. So I have a map point file that I created and I want to utilize in Maptitude. I'm going to choose that file and click Open. Maptitude is going to scan the map point file and then provide me with some options for importing. So after that data have been scanned, I receive the import map point data dialog. I only have one layer in here, so it's already checked. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. After I have clicked OK, I'm just going to create a new folder that I'm going to save that map point layer into. Maptitude scans through that map point file and imports it into my new map. At the end of the process, I'll click Done, and that territory wizard shows once again. So these settings are correct. I'm just going to click Next. I can again choose any of the tracking fields that I might want. So I can choose that widgets field again if I want it, and clicking Finish results in Maptitude taking that map point file that I had created a long time ago and moving that into Maptitude for further customization. So again, from here, all of the uh, steps are going to be the same.